Okay, so let's talk about all the main concepts that you need to know about CloudFormation. So this is going to be the, the 50,000 foot view. We want this for the same reason that you, well, that you want to map while you're traveling. So no matter where you're trying to go, you've got a good, healthy bird's eye view of how to get there. So here is our 50,000 foot view of the cloud formation process. Make a cloud formation template that has all the stuff you want for your infrastructure in it, and then upload it to AWS cloud formation. That's it. <laughs> so no matter how deep we dive into the details, you know, don't forget that the workflow really is this simple. Make your template and upload it. Now, obviously, there's, <laughs> there's some things to expand on here. So let's expand on making a template. Well, first up, what is a template? Well, simply put, it's just a JSON or YAML file that lists everything you want in your infrastructure and how you want to connect it. It's all just JSON or YAML syntax and semantics with AWS's own set of rules sprinkled on top. But at the end of the day, again, it's just plain JSON or YAML, just one file. Granted, you can have multiple files, but let's not, let's not go into that just yet. Okay, so that's a template. But now if we zoom into the process of making a template, what are you doing? Well, you're just listing and connecting your resources. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, just like how in the console, right, you pick a service and start something up. Well, in CloudFormation, you pick a service and then you list it in your template following the right syntax and semantics. And let's just, let's just look at some examples. So I'm going to hop over to the official AWS resource and property types reference, right? And I'm, I'll make sure that I link to this below the video, but here's a list of all AWS resources that you can make with CloudFormation, right? So we can just scan down through here and you can see every single one of them. And how do you make them? Well, you just put them in your template. So let's say that I wanted to create a security group. Well, how would I figure that out in CloudFormation? Well, the mental model here is to treat this screen, this property types reference, as if it were the AWS console. This is an extremely helpful model to use when you're developing CloudFormation, especially if you haven't done a lot with it. Well, if this was the console, right? If we were logged into the console, and by the way, hopefully you've gone through the EC2 fundamental series, what would you do? Well, you'd first you'd go to the EC2 console, right? Well, in this case, we need to go to the EC2 resource page. So we would scroll down through here until we find EC2 that I have conveniently highlighted here <laughs> and click into it. And what happens when you select the EC2, when you select EC2 from the console page? Well, you're shown all the different things that you can make on that page. Well, similarly here on the EC2 resource type reference, right? We're shown every single thing that we can make with CloudFormation listed on this page. And so just like how in the console, if we, we looked at, if we land in the EC2 console, and we wanted to make a security group, we'd find, look for the security group, a little side navigation link and go into it. Well, same with this page, right? We just scroll down until we find security group. And here we go right here. We click on this. So let me click into the security group. And so here we can see the security group and its properties and everything about it. We just scroll through, you know, hopefully some of these things look familiar. If you've done anything, you know, in the console, like tags and the group description in group name. And if you scroll down to examples, they pretty much show you this is exactly how you would put this inside of your CloudFormation template. Now, the thing to notice, right? So first up, if this intimidates you, don't worry, we're going to go through all of it. We're going to code out every single thing, so we'll walk through it. But the thing to notice when scrolling through this documentation is it's, uh, it's pretty sparse, right? And that brings up a really good point that I need to drive home. If you want to work with a service in CloudFormation, you need to know it. Because as you can see, there is no handholding here. None of these property descriptions tell you anything about how, securities, how security groups work or their relation to EC2. And we'll talk about this more shortly. But here, let's go back down to the examples. Here down in examples, we can see what a security group should look like in a template. 
And so while in the console, you just create the group and fill out the information for CloudFormation, you find the resource you want in the docs, like so, right? You fill in its properties, which we can see here. These are the, all the properties that we need to deal with. And then you just add it to your template. So let's hop back over to our slides here. So the process then, when you're listing and connecting resources, is to just find what you want, pick the properties, and add it to your template. And again, the great mental model to operate on, you know, for your workflow, let's hop back over to the docs here, is to just treat this main resource page right here as if you were logging into the AWS console. You have all your services here. You pick them, you pick it, you go in, and when you pick a service, there's more options. You pick the option, and then you would set it up. Well, same here. You pick the resource you want. You go in, you figure out what you want about it, and you put it in your template. Now, I'm really trying to drive this home and this way to think because it really, this really is as, as simple as the workflow gets. Now, that all being said, there's two points that I want to cover before we move on. So we've got this here. Let's go ahead and uh, hop back over. First, let's return to the point that we made earlier. CloudFormation assumes you know the services. Right, We saw it in the security group page. There's no hand-holding when you get to CloudFormation. If you don't know how EC2 works, if you don't know the options and the configurations, you know, if you don't know the relationships between all the different resources, well, quite frankly, it's, it's kind of irresponsible to keep going because all you'll be doing is copying and pasting example code and hoping things work out. And considering just how important infrastructure is to a business, that should never, <laughs> which should never be the approach. And, you know, it also hurts you because you miss out on an opportunity to actually learn and instead hold yourself uh, hostage, right, to examples and step by steps, which can work in the short run, but it'll it'll bite in the in the long run. Okay, and then the second thing is that CloudFormation shows you the hidden pieces of AWS. Now, this is a really cool thing, but by that, I mean, well, let's just hop back over to the docs and let's take another look at stuff. Let's go back into EC2. So here we are in EC2. And then when we look through all of the different things that we can make, you know, some of these are going to look familiar, right? So we have the EIP, you know, we have the security group and, uh, a VPC, right? D different volumes and the like. But then there's some other resources on here that you don't see in the console. So for example, security group ingress and egress. There is nothing that you can click on in the console that, that will do anything like that. But let's just go ahead and click in to ingress and let's see what this has in it here. Well, it adds an inbound rule to a security group. If we look through, if we just go down to an example here real quick, It'll, it'll start looking really familiar. Oh, well, this is that part of the security group in the console where it asks you what type of rules you want, right? Well, the thing is, is even though the console makes security groups and adding all those little rules, like opening up port 22 in this example, even though the console makes it look like one thing, what actually happens when you create a security group, right, is you then create a set of security group ingress rules that are then associated with a security group. And in fact, you know, they have that right here in the example. And so, for example, when you add a rule that allows for HTTP traffic on port 80, well, that's just a security group ingress resource associated with a security group. And again, in the console, that's hidden from us out of convenience, but in CloudFormation, we have to do it, right? So this is what I mean by the different hidden pieces. When you start working with CloudFormation, you get to see all these smaller background pieces that you don't get to see in the console or the CLI. You know, on one hand, it's fascinating, but on the other hand, if you're not aware of it, it can really trip you up. Okay, so here is the first part of our workflow is just make a template. And how do you make a template? You just find what you want, you pick the properties, and you add it to your template. And again, you just use that resource page as if it were the AWS console. Okay, so conceptually, this is pretty simple. And so on to the next step. Once your template is done, you upload it to AWS CloudFormation, either through the console or the CLI. Now, of course, 
there are some extra points to this. You know, the only thing you really do when you're uploading it, though, is just select options on how you want it deployed. You know, these are things like, what do you want to name the set of resources created from? What what do you, or the set of resources, so the stack of them. What notifications do you want to set up? What parameters do you want to use with it? And we'll cover these options when we get to them. But when you've uploaded a valid template, CloudFormation hauls off and makes all the resources that you've asked it to. And, well, the result of a built template is referred to as a stack. So when all the resources are built from your template, so you've got this template and you've got this grocery list of every single thing that you want AWS CloudFormation to build for you, and it goes off and builds it, those things together are known as a stack. Not known, but referred to as a stack. The beauty of this is that they're literally grouped together from AWS's point of view. All resources created from a template get tagged, so you can easily group them together and find them. And of course, you can add tags yourself. Now, I bring this up because it's one of the three core terms in CloudFormation. We've already talked about one, and that's the template. It's the template for the infrastructure you want to build. Well, the, the second one is the stack. And again, a stack is just a group of resources that's made from one template. Now, to get to the third term, we need to take a look at our workflow. So again, creating a stack, right? What we've done so far is we've talked about how to create a stack of resources from a template. We say, oh, look at this list, my wonderful list of everything I need to create some infrastructure. Maybe it has some servers in it, so some EC2 instances, a network and other things. And then when we're ready, we pass it to CloudFormation and then it goes and creates everything in our template, groups it together and calls it a stack. But what if we want to update an infrastructure created from a template? Well, the workflow isn't that different. The first thing we do is update the template that we made our stack from. So say we have a template with a security group that allows for HTTP traffic and we want to open up SSH traffic as well. Well, the next step would be to add that to our template. So there we go. First, first thing is done. What's next? Well, we'd pick our deployed stack from CloudFormation, right? So whatever stack we had deployed from our original template, and we upload the updated template. So it's like the same process, except instead of choosing to create a new stack, we just choose to update an existing stack by giving it an updated template file. But then after that, we have one more step. And that's to confirm the set of changes that CloudFormation will make. This set of changes is our third core term, a change set. When you update a stack to use an updated template, it'll generate a change set, and this will show you all the things that CloudFormation plans to do. Now, obviously, this is incredibly useful for catching hiccups or mishaps. And then after you've confirmed it, well, it'll go, it'll do the updates. And that, folks, is, that's it. <laughs> that's really all there is to the cloud formation workflow from a 50,000 foot view. You know, for all the crazy tooling and DSLs out there and silver bullets, you know, just know it really can be this simple. You can make a single JSON file and be on your, your merry way. <laughs> you don't have to have some labyrinth of a development environment or framework to write infrastructure as code. You just need one file.